One of the most common questions asked by people with memory problems is whether there's anything that the person can do to help maintain and improve their memory. In this presentation, we're going to explain to you a little bit about what memory actually is and make some suggestions about little things that you might be able to try to help manage your memory difficulties. Some of the things suggested will work for some people and not for others. Everybody is an individual, so it's up to you to try them and see whether or not they are something that you could incorporate into your everyday lives. When talking of memory, people often refer to it as a thing, something that we have, something that lives somewhere in our brain. Whereas in actual fact, memory is a series of different processes, each working together to allow us to recall and recognise different types of information. Memory uses information that we acquire through our senses. We can therefore use sensory information to help us remember things. For example, have you ever smelt a perfume or a particular smell that takes you right the way back to your childhood. Possibly the taste of something will take you back to a holiday that you shared many, many years ago. Everything that we remember has to first come into our brain and it does this by coming in through our senses. We are constantly taking in new information through all of our senses and that is registered in our sensory memory ability. As we said before, working memory is the, our ability to remember short-term information. So try it for yourself. Try to remember this number. And when you're doing that, you are using your working memory. Your working memory helps you hold information for short periods of time. So you can try your working memory now by trying to remember the number that you can see on the screen. A good way to think of episodic memory is to think of it as a mental diary or a little computer that we store inside our heads. Everything that happens to us is stored inside that diary. A good analogy for semantic memory is that it's a little bit like an encyclopedia. Over our lives we collect lots and lots of information that we gradually build on until we become the very wise people that we are today. And as we said before, procedural memory is your how to do something memory. Riding a bike, driving the car, cutting hair, sewing, lots of different activities rely on procedural memory. And prospective memory, things that we're going to do in the future. We rely on this quite a lot, such as having to remember appointments, whether it's somebody's birthday, to buy things from the shop. And this can be the type of memory that we notice is affected first when we have difficulties with our memory. As we said before, memory is a process, not a thing. And the process that we follow is that we have to perceive the information first and then we have to get it into our memory and then it has to be stored somewhere and then when we want to remember it we have to be able to get it out again. So it's a little bit like a computer where we put things in using the keyboard, we click save and then we go and find the file when we need to use it again. So why then do we forget? We can forget because this process breaks down at any one of those stages. 
So for example, if we can't get the information into our memory in the first place, then we cannot remember it. It's a bit like having a dodgy keyboard on a computer. If you're trying to put it in, but it's not being transferred into the computer memory, then it can't come out again. Similarly, if we can't store the information effectively, then we can't recall it when we need it. And then lastly, we maybe can store the information, but we don't know where to look to find it. A little bit like if we've put a book back in a library and we've put it back in the wrong place. We know it's there somewhere, but it's difficult to go exactly to that information when we need it. So just take a few moments now and perhaps jot down some of the things that you find it difficult to recall now. Some of the things that you forget. Some common examples of what people forget are things like personal experiences. So for example, what you had for lunch yesterday or where you went last Tuesday. Sometimes we forget things that need to be done or we put things down and we can't remember where we've put them. One of the most embarrassing things that people find is forgetting people's names. And then that sensation of thinking, I know you, but I can't recall who you are. Sometimes we forget instructions or we go to the shop and we come back without some of the items that we need. Or possibly we forget conversations that we've had or appointments that we need to attend, or birthdays and anniversaries. This type of forgetting happens to everyone. But when you have a diagnosis of dementia, it's more likely to happen to you more often. So if it's more likely to happen to you, what are the things that you can do to help you cope with your forgetfulness? You can do some memory training techniques, which we will cover later in this presentation. You can use memory aids, things like diaries or telephones to record things. You can make sure that you have a healthy lifestyle. And you can get support from other people to help you do the things that you now find more difficult. So let's start with some memory training techniques. One approach that people often find helpful is a problem solving approach. So for example, if the problem is forgetting to take your medication regularly, Decide how important it is to you that you recall when to take your medication. So for example, if it happens a lot and you're worried about your health and worried that your well-being might be affected, try to generate some ideas in how you could do things differently, such as putting the tablets next to your bed or in the bathroom so that before you go to bed or when you get up in the morning, you will see them. You could try using an alarm to remind you to take the medication or possibly an automatic pill dispenser might be something that would work for you. Once you've tried these techniques, you can then go back and review whether or not the problem has been solved. If it has, all well and good, incorporate that into your everyday life. But if not, go back to the beginning and then try something different. It's very important that you continue to stimulate your mind. Some of the strategies that we're going to discuss will help some people more than others and simply select the ones that you find useful. Be sure to practice them regularly because as the saying goes, practice makes perfect.
Internal strategies refer to doing things in our own minds. Now, these strategies can be verbal, visual, or you can try them both together. The first very common strategy that people try is something called mnemonics. And all that means is creating sayings or words. So, if you want to remember things in a specific order, north, east, south, west, you might say to yourself, never eat shredded wheat. And that can help you remember the directions on a compass. Or perhaps you want to remember a shopping list. You could try using the first letter of each item on a shopping list and trying to make that into a word. So for example, if you had to buy bread, apples, tea and sugar, you could make it into the word bats. If you wanted to remember a set of instructions, you could say lock the doors and windows at night. And that means D-A-W-N or dawn. You can try this out for yourself now. Can you make a word from these items on a shopping list? Some people find it easier to remember names if they use words and rhymes to go with the person's name. For example, they might say, Pretty Pauline, Loud Linda, Pleasant Penny, Smiley Sarah, Jolly Judy. Can you think of any for your family or friends? When learning new information for the first time, it's really important to ensure that you are taking in the correct information. If you learn it wrongly in the first place, it can be very difficult to overcome that learning. So please try not to guess at information you're learning because you may make mistakes and remember the wrong information. Tasks with a large number of steps, such as putting on a load of washing, can be complicated to remember. The simplest thing to do is to break the tasks down into separate stages, so that prompts can be given to carry out each stage correctly. So using the example of washing clothes, the first step is usually to collect all the washing together and then you need to put it in the washing machine. Close the machine door, select the cycle, put in the washing powder and then switch the machine on. There may be small differences in the order that people do these things. So for example, people might want to put the washing powder in first before they select the cycle. But generally speaking, this process follows a similar order. So it may be helpful to have all these stages written down. And then, once the task has been successfully completed a number of times, you can slowly begin to remove the prompt at the very last stage. So, can you remember what was number six on the list? Can you remember number five as well as number six?
Another useful technique is to get anything you need to remember organised. So break long lists of things that you might need from the shop down into bite-sized chunks. So for, this is an example of a shopping list that's broken down into fruits and vegetables, drinks, household cleaning and tinned items. Another good way is to try using a mental picture, using your spatial memory, for example, to remember a pin number. So as you can see, this number is 2369. Some people would find it much easier to remember the shape that it makes on the keypad. If you're going to use visualization as a technique to help your memory, Try to make the images as pleasant and as memorable as you can. Funny or unusual images will often be more memorable. Try to jot or write the image down and then practice using it. You can also tell someone you trust about your strategy so that if you do forget, they can remind you. Using your visual memory is a great way to help you recall things. So for example, if you've put something down in the house and you don't know where it is, try to visualize where you were the last time you had it. Another way to use visualization is to picture yourself doing the task you're attempting. Try to see clearly what you're doing in your mind's eye and see yourself doing it successfully. Another good technique is using association and elaboration. So in other words, linking ideas and images together to help you remember. This is a great technique for remembering names. Perhaps a lady you've just met is called Elizabeth. So possibly you could picture a crown on her head. Or perhaps a man you've just met is called Mr Goldstein. Now it's hard to imagine anything for Goldstein, so you might need to change it slightly into gold stone. Can you think of any images to help you remember these names? You can also use association to help you remember facts. So perhaps you want to remember that John Kennedy was involved in the Bay of Pigs invasion. What images can you think of to link them together? You can also use association to help you remember numbers. This one is a little bit more complex, but it can be a helpful tool to help you remember important numbers. So looking at this number, what can you associate with it? Perhaps you live at number 24, or your brother has just turned 76, and there are family birthdays on the 3rd and the 21st of the month. Maybe you've just had your golden wedding anniversary and you have five grandchildren. If you can combine all those facts, it can help you remember quite a long series of numbers. This one is called the method of Loki. In this technique, you associate what you want to remember with places that you're very familiar with. So you could pick a familiar room in your house and then put the things you want to remember in specific places in that room. Mindfulness-based approaches can also be helpful to you. Try to focus on the things you can do and let go of anything that you find difficult. It's important to exercise your brain 
So try to develop your mental skills by doing things that you enjoy. Things like puzzles, crosswords or games. Give yourself time to form new memories. So avoid trying to do too much at once and really focus and elaborate on the item you need to remember. You may find that using information from more than one sense helps you strengthen a memory of something. So try to notice how things look, smell, sound, possibly taste and feel like. Think about a coffee shop. Think about all that sensory information that goes on around you when you go somewhere like that. You can also use environmental clues to help you remember something important. If you wanted to remember a birthday, you could weigh your watch on the other wrist or put something in a different place, but you might need to leave yourself a note as well. The change will prompt you to look at your note. So far, we've been looking at things that you can do in your mind, but this time we're going to move on to things that you can use around you, external strategies using physical objects or items to help your memory. Memory aids include things like diaries, notepads, or these days, computers or tablets. They can help you with things such as where you need to be today, what day of the week it is. This can help reduce the need for you to keep asking others for help. And it's useful for keeping track of information changes, such as cancelled appointments. Small changes that you can make in your environment can be very, very useful to help you remember things. For example, using labels as reminders or colour coding items can help ease the frustration of not being quite able to remember where things go. And keeping things like keys and glasses in a special place or even attached to your person can also save a lot of frustration. But whatever you use, it's important that the aid is prominent and obvious because otherwise you will forget to use it. Some people find that social situations are more difficult than other types of situations. So individual strategies can be developed for coping with any situations that you might find embarrassing or challenging. For example, if you tend to forget people's names, you might prefer to avoid introducing people and leave this to a partner or a friend. And talking about general things such as the weather whilst you're trying to remember who a person is can be helpful to buy you time. Or just asking the person questions that may provide clues as to who they are can be another helpful strategy. Living with memory problems can have its challenges, but you can help overcome these by having a regular routine and try to do just one thing at a time to help reduce the load on your memory. Wherever you can, keep yourself organised and wherever possible, avoid distractions and noise. Think about when your energy levels are highest. What time of the day do you feel best? Some people are morning people, other people prefer the evenings, but try to do things when you know that your energy levels are at their highest. A healthy lifestyle includes physical and mental health and includes social activities. Coping with stress is really, really important because stress will make your memory problems seem a lot worse than they actually are.
you can maximize your physical health by eating as healthily as you can, stop smoking, and moderate your alcohol intake. Following good sleep hygiene techniques and exercising your body and your mind are also ways of maximizing your physical health capacity. You can manage your mental health needs by finding ways to manage stress and minimizing worry. Give yourself time for things you enjoy, such as hobbies, and do try to practice relaxation techniques. Do not sit in the house, but go outside, and please try to socialize with others. So in summary, there are three basic stages of memory processing and there are many different types of memory. Problems can occur in any of these areas, but there are many ways to help your memory and you may need to try them all to find out which ones work for you.